What is up, you guys? Hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. This video is going to get you guys ready for tomorrow's trading day. It's going to give you everything that you pretty much need to know related to AMC. We'll cover the short interest. We'll cover the charts. We'll cover Stocko Tracker. We'll cover Wanda and really how Wanda had a significant impact on AMC over the past week, in my personal opinion. But first, if you guys can, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure that you ring that bell for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help me out. It really helps the video get out there. Every single time you hit that like button, it gets out to another ape. And if that ape hits that like button, it just gets out to another one, and then it just gets out of crazy, kind of like us hopefully going to the moon with AMC. So let's strap in cover the charts here and take a look at AMC. The huge thing that I want to highlight is over the past couple of days on the five day, five minute chart, we've done a really good job of respecting 1205 to $12. And it seems like 1205 to $12 is becoming that new 10 to 1050 mark. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, if we hop out to the one month time frame and we take a look down here, I have 999 to 1050 and over the past essentially month we've traded in this channel a good couple of days we were definitely very comfortable within this channel we move back even further here and take a look back here at the end of march we traded one two three four essentially five and a half five-ish days in this 10 to 10 50 channel and we're we got really comfortable within that channel now we're getting really comfortable within this 12 to 12 35 channel and the huge thing that I'm looking for is us to sit here and test $12.35. We tried to test it here intraday and we were rejected off of it several times here. So we had one test, two tests here. And the other thing that I'm going to be looking for is on Monday is for us to just simply test another maybe three or four times. And the reason why I say three or four times is because I'm going to come back here to the 18th not the 18th, the 13th, and really take a look at these candles here. So one, we wanted to get through 1235. We were rejected once, twice, three times, and on the fourth time we got through it and saw that nice pump and volume come through it. And that's exactly what I'm going to be looking for is for an hour candle here to close above 1235. So if we get an hour candle to close above here, it's exactly what I'm going to look for. And that will confirm to me that we respected 12 we broke through that level of resistance and now we're going to respect it as a level of support with 1235 it's definitely something that i'm going to be looking for on our moves for tomorrow and keep in mind if the broader market is red the broader market will have an influence on amc so we may not be able to test it tomorrow if the broader market is red so just keep that in mind but our rsi sitting here at 4126 so we're sitting just below neutral which is a good thing because if we do make a move to the upside we have a long ways to go before we become overbought we are closer to oversold than what we are at overbought but the thing that i really want to point out here is we really have a, it looks like a convergence of the macd and the signal down here which is exactly what we want we want a bullish convergence we want these to converge and then the MACD, the cross over the signal and cause a divergence. And as soon as these two diverge from each other and we have the bullish confirmation, that is a good thing on the one month, one hour chart. The other thing I want to do is hop out here to, we'll, we'll use the one month, one hour, is really we have this ascending level support here that we have from 893 all the way up. And we have seemed to find support here right on this ascending level support. So what I want us to see is I want us to continue to respect this ascending level support. In order to do so, we have to make a move up to 1235 or really continue to respect the upper end of this channel each day. And the other thing is we have this descending level of resistance here too from our high of 1580. So we do have to make a move here in the next couple of days. I personally think we will because if we take a look here also at the options chain and take a look at the end of next week really we have a lot of calls expiring at the 20 dollars mark we also have the 15 dollars strike too that we have a lot of expiring at but the huge thing is on the 18th we at the 40 dollars price target we have 133,587 
contracts that are open, which is huge. Personally, I own one of those, uh, several of those contracts. So I'm definitely one of those people. And there's definitely some form of sentiment behind the stock of us continuing to go to the upside. So that's why I think we'll continue to move to the upside. The general sentiment of the stock is still very bullish right now especially considering the fact that we just got Wanda out of the way. They're 30.46 million shares. The fact that all of those were sold, who do they sell them to? I think a lot of them went to us retail apes who were holding the stock and wanting to see it go to the moon, in my personal opinion. Now, let's take a look here at the year-to-date time, time frame. So really, we're still riding this ascending level of support, which is good from 191 all the way up. You can really see here that we have our decent level of resistance and our ascending level of support here. And it's the thing that I want us to continue to respect. We still have the 15 day moving average and the 60 day moving average moving in the upwards direction, 200 day moving average is moving in upwards direction as well. Our RSI is pretty much sitting at neutral, it's sitting at 56.47, so a little bit above neutral. We do have, it looks like a little bit of a convergence here on the MACD, we're still in bullish territory. But it's good that we're getting this consolidation and this pullback because what it'll do is it'll allow these two signal these two indicators to get closer together which is healthier and will drive down implied volatility now let's go over here and cover ortex and cover the short interest on this because we finally saw an uptick in short interest data from ortex now this is all live data this isn't a t plus two kind of thing it's all live data from my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. Feel free because I'm a smooth brain ape and I need a wrinkle or two added to my brain. So if I'm wrong, let me know. But we saw an increase of 2.33%. So our short interest of free float is sitting at 15.23%. So yes, it has significantly dropped over the past week. Our current short interest is sitting at 76.72 million shares. Previously reported on the exchange as of May 11th was 93.89. So, oh, that was April 30th. My bad. That was on April 30th. The last was reported on, come on, April 30th. Well, that should have been more recent. Data from April 30th as reported by the exchange on, oh, May 11th. That's a little confusing. Okay. So May 11th, 87.55 million was reported. And then on April 30th, 93.89. So we have come down about, give or take, let's say 30-ish million shares, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The thing that I also want to highlight here is this is absolutely not a dead cat because our shares on loan is still sitting at 124.46 million shares. Anyone who tells you that this is dead, they're absolutely delusional because the shorts are still continuing to short the stock because they borrowed 6.42 million shares on Friday. And we had a positive borrow change of 2.9 million. So yes, this isn't far from a dead cat. There is still a large outstanding shares on loan balance. Our utilization sitting at 96.68%. Yes, it's not quite 100, but we're headed back in that direction very quickly. And that's the thing that I want to also cover is this short interest in how it relates of, we saw a drastic decrease of it. And then we saw Wanda selling on essentially the third, starting on the 13th, and they finished on the 18th. My personal theory is that as Wanda sold and the short started to cover, that's the reason why we didn't see this stock absolutely go to the moon because Wanda dumped 30.46 million shares and we saw our short interest decrease, let's say roughly about 25-ish million shares. The fact that that happened and we saw that the shorts covered, essentially Wanda definitely helped the shorts out. Now, in my personal opinion, I'd much rather this happen because now we have Wanda out of the way. Now we don't have this worry of like impending an impending institution who want needs to get out of their position because we knew a while back in March that Wanda needed to get out of their position and they finally got out of it. So yay, I will take that because we can absolutely still squeeze off of 15.23% short interest of free float. Absolutely can. This doesn't even take into account all the synthetics, all the naked shorts and all that kind of stuff. And guys, in my personal opinion, it's a lot higher than what a lot of us think because they're doing a good job of beating the stock down. And we saw how quickly that the stock went from 
1467. If we hop here out on the five day chart, uh, come on, let me have this right here. 1467, in the next three minutes, they just flushed us down the toilet. So this tells me that if we get over $15, it's going to be a really painful zone for the, those short positions. And Wanda definitely helped them out because if we want to talk about this and take a look at the past five days here. So let's use the month time frame. So on the 13th, we know that Wanda sold about 96 point. 96-ish 96 ish thousand shares on this day. And they apparently primarily did it during the pre-market hours. So it makes sense that they sold this here because we essentially had a very bullish day. Next day on the 14th, they sold 4.12 million shares sold. So don't know exactly when they sold it, but I mean, we can take a look here and take a look at the block sizes here. And all of these are pretty high. Now, if we if they sold it during the pre-market, we're gonna have to take a look here. They would have they would have had to do it, yeah, during the day here on the 14th, because all these candles are not reflective of one giant dump. I mean, they could have sold it possibly over eh, maybe. They could have sold it possibly over the whole entire pre-market, but you have what one point Four six, you have one point three, so that's two point seven. It yeah, maybe, but definitely over the fourteenth they sold four point one two million shares. This is all confirmed. Nine point nine million shares here on the seventeenth. So if we take a look here, seventy five, one forty four, seven hundred. So yeah, nineteen ish million. So and they had a dollar cost average around fourteen dollars. So they definitely sold up here towards the top. Now the huge thing that I want to highlight is on May 18th. So on the 18th, they sold 505,000 during the pre-market around $14.98. The other thing that I want to highlight too is they had the debt they dumped the rest of their position the rest of, rest of it 16.43 million shares on the 18th, which makes a lot of sense as the reason why we saw this downwards pressure because it was a lot of selling because they need to get rid of all of their shares. Now, my personal theory is this is the exact reason why we didn't see ourselves just go absolutely nuclear, nuclear last week is because we saw the shorts covering and then Wanda just came in on top and said, hold on, let me back the truck up and sell all my shares because we knew they wanted to get out of that position. So the shorts definitely did get out with a very lucky position, but this is still far from a dead cat because we still see 15.23% of our free float and they're still borrowing short shares. So now that we essentially are trading flat from Wanda having a position and now Wanda doesn't have a position and we're about flat right now from before and afterwards, I will absolutely take that because having Wanda out of the way makes me a very happy person. And if we hop over here on Ortex, we can see that Wanda had 30.4% or 6 million shares, which was a significant stake within the company. I think a lot of those shares went to us. We can take a look at this article too. Wanda sells off AMC theaters stake for $4.26 million. And that's the huge thing is we knew that Wanda wanted to get out of this position. They are finally out of it and they only own 10,000 shares now. It's a very good thing for us because now there's not really a majority holder stake in AMC, there's not one institution that owns a lot. It's like BlackRock and Vanguard are kind of going back and forth. And you might be able to say that us retail investors own the float of it and essentially own AMC now. So take it with what you want. Take it with a grain of salt. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. So take everything with what I say with a grain of salt and do your own due diligence. But personally, I think we own the whole entire float in my personal opinion. And now that we own the whole entire float and Wanda's out of the way, now we just have to deal with the shorts and just buy the stock up and just wait for father time to come through and just say, margin call, Kenny G, give me your mail kind of thing. But let's cover the short ETFs also through Stocko Tracker. So we'll see here that we have 11,034 short ETFs that are available. On Friday, we did see some get returned and some also taken away too. So they're shorting the stock, not only just through short shares, but through short ETFs. 
And the one crazy thing that I found out about Stock Road Tracker is if you come down here and you take a look at this trading data, on the 21st, 60.9% of our volume was short interest, was short shares. That's insane. So it's six out of every 10 shares that were traded were short shares. That's insane, guys, insane. And the fact is, if we own as many shares as we own, hello, like it, we own the flow. There's a crap ton of synthetic shares and it's a lot more than what a lot of us think because there's no way that you can be shorting the stock 60, 57, 55, 61, 48, 56, 47 percent and like have enough shares because you have 76.72 million shares plus 124.46 million shares on loan right there. So you already have 200 million shares. We know that institutions own like 121 million. Insiders own like 34. Like the whole thing is like, this is so messed up and there's so many synthetics. There's so many naked shorts. Like I can't even wrap my head around it because this is just part of my language, but this is so buggered up that we can't tell what is going to be fake and what is going to be real. And that is a problem not for us, for the market makers and for the hedge funds that are shorting this stock, because in the end, they're going to have to foot the bill on this, not us. But anyways, that's, sorry about my rant, but we're getting fail failures delivered. On the 30th, we had 198,447 failures delivered at the closing price of $10.20. That is absolutely huge. Still getting a lot of FTDs. Our current calls in the money are sitting at 83,040 calls in the money. We have 3.2 million short shares that are available to borrow. So short shares are definitely still there. Wanda did definitely help more short shares become available because of them dumping that 30.46 million shares. Now let's take a look at the options chain here for this week and take a look and see if we can find a point where we might be fighting for a certain position. And what jumps out to me right away on the call side is right here at $15, we have 10,469 contracts in the money. At the next point of $21, we have another 10,677. But on the put wall, looking for like a put wall here, there really isn't much of a put wall. I mean, maybe at $10, there's 8,194 contracts, but there's not a significant put wall for this week. If we bump out the next week and take a look at that, Let's see here. We have next week. It doesn't look like there's, I mean, the largest strike is going to be the $15 strike in 9,173 open interest contracts. Um, we take a look for a put wall for next week. There really isn't a put wall for next week too. So keep that in mind. So if anything, hopping into this for this week, I think it's going to be personally, in my opinion, it's going to be a fight for $15. It's going to be a fight for $15 because we have 10,000 contracts here in the money. I mean, $14, we have 7,000, but there's not really an out large outstanding put position here too. The really odd thing is when we hop out here to the June 18th, and this tells me that AMC absolutely has a huge bullish sentiment behind it, is because if we take a look at this $10, what is going on with my options chain here? Whoa. Whoa. Interesting. We will did you just change all of a sudden? But anyways, if you take a look at this, if you take a look at this $40 strike, 133,587 contracts at the $40 strike. Yes, this is incredibly far out of the money, but there's 133,587 open interest contracts at $40. That tells me the bullish sentiment that people are willing to lob $35 at least at this strike to see if they can get some form of something in the money because these are the contracts that are going to print you absolute bonkers tendies because they are so far ahead of the money that when they do get in the money, you're already going to be up so much that it's just going to roll really quickly. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. None of it's financial advice and take everything what I say with a grain of salt. But really, this $40 strike is definitely going to be a point where we're going to have to keep our eye out on it and see if this continues to rise or if it falls kind of thing. So 
But really, that's what I got for you guys today regarding AMC. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, drop a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.